the best beard oil for drummers. How to record with beard oil. Beard oil. <laughs> I will watch that. I completely forgot about this video. We filmed it on uh, using overheads when recording the drums, how to mic them, all of that. Uh, it was recorded with my good buddy Robert Venable. He's a Grammy-nominated engineer, as well as a drummer for the chart-topping band As We Ascend, as well as number one podcast, the Turned Up podcast. Like The guy, everything he touches turns to gold, and it also sounds stellar. He's one of the most talented I've found whenever it comes to getting solid drum sounds. That's what people search him out for. So check it out. It's all about using overheads whenever you're um, recording the drums. Awesome. We're back. I'm Robert Venable. This is Steven Taylor. This is my channel, Robert. That, which is why I invited you on my channel. Uh, okay. Because Makes sense. I am myself, and this is Robert Venable, my former friend, before he took over. Former friend? My, yeah, well, you know, you can't just come into somebody's YouTube channel and decide to take over You can't things. come into my studio with your YouTube channel and expect me not to take All right. We are going to be talking about the number one thing, at least from Robert's perspective, that he's told me in, in getting a good drum sound, and that is... Uh, the room mics and the overheads. It's the big key in getting your drums to sound good in the recording studio. And a lot of that sound comes from the room. A lot of, a lot of drummers that I've met, they completely ignore that section of it, and most of their sound is coming from the, the mics on the drums, which is, you want to get you that need, sound. You need those. You have to have that sound. But so your drums can sound so much bigger. Absolutely if you utilize the room that you're in and the sounds you can get from that. So we are going to be... You know, well, I was going to say, even if it's a small room, um, you need to capture some of that room sound um, or at least learn how to fake it, which well, I can show you. Robert's last studio, the, the drum room wasn't huge. Am I wrong in yeah, no. it, what I remember? I recorded Grammy-nominated records, platinum-selling records in a room smaller than a bedroom. Yeah, and so you do not have to have a huge 100 by 100 square foot room. Like you, it doesn't have to be that big. No. You can get great sounds. It's just how you use your equipment. So we're going to be talking about that. Before we jump into the studio and get down to brass tacks, though, I want you to put your questions for Robert or me down in the comments. What is your biggest question about room mics or miking the drums for a room sound? Put that down there. Maybe you have a tip. We want to hear from you. We're always learning, too. Yeah. We're, we, we do this for a living, but, man, I'm always learning day to day. So put that stuff in the comments section, and then we're going to go jump over in the studio on the drum set. Let's hit it. All right, so this is something that Robert is adamant about, like the room sound and how that sounds. All too often we get so focused on these right on the drums that we don't realize that there's a whole room that's happening that is also producing and accepting sound and there's lots of things bouncing around. So right. let's talk about... And that overall, the drum sound overheads and room mics are what's going to capture a lot of the body of the, of the drum kit as a whole. You're going to get a lot of the cymbals and the hi-hat and the ride and any effects you've got going on or auxiliary percussion, you might pull up a tambourine or whatever. This is where these mics come into handy. Plus, you know, having the close mics on the toms and the kick and the snare are great, but if you don't have the whole kit and caboodle here, um, it's just going to sound a little, it's not going to sound realistic. Because when you go to a show or you're practicing or whatever it may be, you're hearing everything. You're hearing the room sound, whether you know it or not. Big room, stadium, small room, bedroom or bathroom or garage or storage unit, wherever you're practicing. Um, you're hearing all that and it's playing a part in what the drum sounds like. So if you don't capture that accurately, you're not accurately capturing the sound of the drum kit. Okay. So that's really important. So how do you capture that? Number one, you're going to want the right kind of microphones. I've got Neumann KM184s up right now, okay. which are small diaphragm condensers, which means they're going to have a really accurate high end. They are going to require some electricity from your console or your preamps. So if you don't know what that is, um, go to google.com and start typing in Phantom power. <laughs> um, and then, so once they're powered, these are going to pick up the cymbals, some of the drums overall, and a little bit of the room, because these are a cardioid pattern, meaning it's just going to pick up what's below it. Okay. It's not going to pick up so much of what's up here, so this is great for recording in small rooms or rooms with low ceilings. Right. And these mics are called, for those of you who don't know, these are overheads. These, these are, are the overheads. overheads. They're capturing what's happening over, your over head. the head. Yeah. yeah there so you go. Um, we're going to want to capture. These symbols, and now I'm not, some people close mic. This is kind of a combination of close micing, meaning micing individual symbols. Right. And a spaced pair, because they're spaced and there's two of them. Um, micing technique, where I'm going to capture kind of the hi-hat and this crash symbol with this, with this microphone. And I've got the ride and a crash ride and an effect stack over there that I'm capturing with that one. Okay. Now, some people argue with you where these go. Some people are like, they go right over the center of the symbols. Some of them say they have to be exactly six feet apart if they're three feet above the kit. There's a lot of science behind that stuff, which is great, and it works. My personal technique, I space them out a little bit. 
Um, got them about five feet apart here, four or five feet apart here. And I'm trying to keep the snare in the center of my image, the kick and snare as close to the center between these two mics as I can. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that the snare is really the, you, you, the snare is really the center of your kit because yeah. that's that's where your your center is. A lot of people will off kilter it, but really the center of your kit is that snare drum. Yeah, it, and so when you're mixing or when someone else is mixing, they're gonna put the kick and the snare right down the center, right yeah. between the two speakers in, in your headphones or whatever you're listening to. The kick and snare will most likely be right down the center, panned right down the middle. Okay. Now your toms might go left to right and the cymbals might sound over here and over here, um, but that's done because you can pan those differently and you can pan this one left and that one right. Right. So keeping the snare in the center, even if we pan this left and that right, the snare is still in the center. Right. Now, that's why I have this one aimed it's a little off center from this cymbal, because okay. I want it, you know, on the edge, the snare and the kick in the center. Right. I can't say that enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I just said it enough. Um, now, I do have three cymbals over there, which are going to be picked up by that one microphone, and that's all right. If you need a little bit more ride cymbal, you can either, one, put up another microphone, watch for face, or two, adjust the placement of that one just a little bit, maybe pulling it out this way a little bit, Maybe pulling it, you know, further that way if you need more of that stack, whatever it may be. Okay. Um, adjust the placement of the mic as long as these two mics, when you play that snare, are in phase together. Okay, so uh, so make sure they're in phase. If the placement's super important. Getting the center of the kit super important. What's what's next? Well, once you've captured the close sound of this drum kit, like that could be enough. If you're in a small room, that could be enough. What I like to do is capture some of the room sound. Let's go okay. over here. I'll show you some more. So this is a little bit wider angle because we're just kind of trying to show you the whole scope of the studio. Uh, this obviously has huge ceilings. You don't have to have that. This is big vaulted beams going across. It's a great room for drums, fantastic room for drums. Um, so you kind of take over and, and walk us through like cool. this whole layout. Okay, so in my particular drum room here, um, since Steven said it, I have tall ceilings and a lot of space here to play around with, I like the way the drums bloom into the room. So I'm gonna capture it in different ways. Right here I have a couple of mics I like to call uh, mono room mics and an effect mic or a gack mic. Um, why is it called a gack mic? Because when you hit the snare, it's gack! Nice. I love it. So, I have a few feet, five, six feet out in front of the drum kit. This one might be about four feet out in front of the drum kit. Um, about waist high and about chest height. I have um, a microphone which is going to get a clean, compressed signal of the whole drum kit overall. And I've got a, a mic right here centered called a copper phone, um, which gives it a more, it sounds like a radio filtered effect, which is pretty cool. Add some energy to your drum tracks. You might not use it, you might. Just bring it up in the mix a little bit. I think it's cool. Not necessary, but it's what I do here. Now over here, and way over there, I have a pair of fathead ribbon mics. Now these are spaced, and I'm gonna pan them hard left and hard right in the mix, but these are capturing a lot of the room sound. They are capturing sound from behind the microphone as well as in front. Um, so that's pretty cool figure eight pattern, meaning if you draw a figure eight, it's coming from the front, nothing, back to the back side of figure eight over there. So it's capturing a lot more of the sound than those cardioid mics are directly on the drums. It's capturing a lot more of the bloom of the room, and it's gonna make your drums sound bigger when brought up in the mix. And I, sometimes I'll throw up another pair of mixes, or another, another pair of microphones on that side of the room to throw into the mix. Um, I actually have a pair up there. I don't know if you can get those or not. Yeah, I mean, but I have another pair of ribbon Royer mics up there, which will do capture just a slightly different sound than the fat heads do. Um, but when you pan those out, it makes your drums sound huge. If you don't have a big drum room, like a lot of you don't, if you're recording drums at home in your bedroom, a trick to do would be take your microphone or a stereo pair of microphones, put them down the hallway if you have a hallway, put them in the corner of the room, end up at the ceiling, put them down the hall in a bathroom with the door open or closed, and see what it sounds like. Experiment putting them in different places. If you're recording in a living room and you have a stairwell, maybe try them in the stairwell or in the kitchen. It's really cool when I've gotten experimental in different studios I've, track, I've tracked in where I've put microphones in bathrooms and hallways and the producers or whoever is mixing will go, what in the world did you do? That room mic sounds great. I'm like, Actually, I'm recording in a bedroom and those were in a bathroom. So it is possible to get great drum sounds in small rooms. I've done it. I know you can do it. Check out those tips and let me know what you think. If you haven't caught the other videos that we've done, we have picked Robert's brain clean. Like he actually doesn't know anything else. He has exhausted all done. of his knowledge done. in these how to mic a snare drum, how to mic a kick drum for better sound, how to mic your toms, and then your overheads. I've gotten questions for over five years on this stuff. And guys, 
I am not an engineer, I am not a producer. This guy is, and he's really good at what he does. So that's why we thought it would be great to bring this to you and just show you what it can sound like. Now there is another video, and that video is actually gonna be a song. I'm gonna be playing, and then I'm gonna let Robert show off a little bit, let him kind of stretch his wings and show you exactly what he can do in the studio when you give him time in the mix. So if you use the tips and techniques that you just saw in this video as well as the other ones about kick and snare and toms, um, you'll see exactly how to take those sounds that you can capture with those techniques and turn them into an actual song and, and my techniques to get there. Yeah. If this has helped you, if all these videos have helped you, please share it with another drummer or musician that you know that you think it might help. Hit that thumbs up button on your way out as well. Jump over to learnhowtorecord.com. Datcom. Datcom. Like from the south. Uh, or you can also go to stevensdrumshed.com if you'd like to jump on my email list and get free lessons. I send out stuff weekly there, but no matter what you do, I'll see you here in the next video. Let's be BFFs.